If you want to make more money from your courses, your coaching or agency, community or whatever it is that you sell, you need to get more leads. If you do not get more leads, if your marketing is not great, you will not make the money. It's as simple as that. Marketing serves the purpose of letting people know about your product so that they can buy from you. And if you don't focus on that, you won't. they won't buy. Now, we've had a few marketing hiccups over the years. There are four particular hiccups that I believe are our biggest marketing pitfalls. And we solve these with online which is permission and as a result in the last few months made 752,000 plus dollars. Now we're going to share these four steps with you in this video and hopefully you guys can implement them for your marketing as well. In case you're wondering who I am my name is Imran Ibn Mansour I'm a student of knowledge and a dairy and I'm also a seven-figure entrepreneur. We've made three million plus dollars selling our courses primarily and currently we're teaching brothers how to scale their courses their coaching agency services and their communities so that they can make seven figures too and we've got something called the seven steps to seven figures that we're going to be sharing with you if you watch all the way to the end we're going to show you how you can access our webinar which is going to be the biggest event in the muslim entrepreneurial space let's get into the podcast alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh guys so these are mistakes that cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars in terms of actual money that we spent and only Allah knows how many millions it cost us in terms of opportunity, right? If we had fixed these mistakes early on, we would have made a lot more money with Allah as permission. These are our biggest mistakes when it came to marketing. Now, why is it important to discuss how to optimize our marketing, Abu Bakr? At the, the day, your marketing is the lifeline of your company. It's, it's, it's the mechanism through which your company will run. It's like, imagine in a factory, you've got a conveyor belt. Mm. The conveyor belt feeds in all the parts into the machine. The machine puts the parts together and you get the final product at the end. If you don't have the parts coming in, there's nothing to make. There's nothing, you're not going to get any conversion. You're not going to get a final product at the end because you haven't got that. So in business, marketing is what brings you customers in the first place. Mm. And that's why it's extremely important that you give your time and your efforts to marketing. And if you're not doing enough marketing, you won't get enough people. If you're in the wrong type of marketing, you'll get the wrong type of people. So all of these things, small tweaks sometimes, or sometimes huge overhauls, can be the difference between seven figures and losing six figures. And I think it's safe to say someone who's got good marketing is mm -hmm. pretty much with Allah's permission always going to be making money. You, Some level of money, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Go, like good money, good yeah. money. You may not scale, mm. you may have other issues that mm. stop you from growing, but there'll always be, always be something coming in if you know how to market because marketing is in essence is just letting people know hey, I have this product and presenting it in a way that looks good looks good and convinces them to buy yeah and even though they might buy it and be like you know what this, this, doesn't, this doesn't even work but you'd always get people that okay, you know what let me just try it mm -hmm. let me just try it so you'd always be making that money but you'd be missing out on so much more money whereas if it did actually work if you had people that were actually mm -hmm. enjoyed it they would then refer it and there's mm -hmm. a lot of things to it yeah so um, the first mistake I would say is that we just weren't getting enough leads. Uh, there's been there's been various different points mm -hmm. in our business lives where we just weren't getting leads. Mm -hmm. And I know that might come as a shock to some people, but the reason we weren't getting leads is because obviously myself and yourself being the founders of our company and at the same time being the faces of our company, which means we are the guys who market, mm -hmm. right? We are the guys who create the the ad creative or the marketing content to get the leads in the first place we obviously at the same time have to also be there when it comes to management we have to be there when it comes to product development we have to be there when it comes to dealing with the issues in the company finances blah blah, blah. the list goes on mm -hmm. and marketing is definitely i would say my strong point like when i make a video with allah's permission i go out there i make an ad i generate leads with allah's which is permission mm -hmm. but the issue is when i'm not focusing on marketing and I'm focusing on other things that then what it can do is it can take away from keeping your eye on the price. Mm. Um, and in recent times, I've just had to make a solid decision, which is that I'm just going to focus on the marketing. Mm. I actually read this book called Traction and it mentioned that a lot of people, what they do is they, they focus, a lot of entrepreneurs, they get the imbalance because they focus primarily on the product. Like developing the course, developing the product. Okay, you've got this amazing course or coaching service that you've prepared. If no one knows about it. No one knows about it, so no one's going to buy. Then other people are like, great when it comes to marketing. They're great, they're solid. But 
there's no product, it's whack. Mm. So what the author of the book says is that you should spend 50-50% of your time and your primary resources on both of these. 50% on product development, 50% on the actual marketing of the product. What's shocking and sad is when you end up spending 50% or more on other than those two. You end up spending 50% or more on things like financial management, employees. things like employees, and all that stuff is really long. And it takes, and by the way, stuff is important, it's stuff mm -hmm. that needs to be done. But at the end of the day, that stuff doesn't necessarily move the company forward. And it, it doesn't require you necessarily, you can get someone else to do it. And that's the point, right? So um, I just, I took a decision. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, I called you, right? I said, bro, and this was a few weeks ago. I said, I've realized that I need to put my head down on creating the course content mm -hmm. for the Righteous and Rich School, which is the product where we're teaching people how to go from seven steps to seven figures. And I need to focus on the content. Because those two things will actually move the company forward. Content being these like podcasts and yeah, social media. The social content media content, content, right? That's actually what's going to move the business forward mm -hmm. with Allah's or just permission. And um, I remember hearing something online in a podcast or something. I can't remember where it was I heard it. But the guy said, you know, a lot of the times you get caught up in doing things in your company that are not even necessary for you to handle. He goes, if you just ignore them, they will tend to get fixed by someone else or just go away. Mm. And I always had this tendency of like, I need to actually wrestle with it and deal with it and fix it. Mm. And I said, you know what? It will go away, inshallah. If somebody's trying to focus on something and there's a fly and it's really annoying you, yeah. you can either spend your time trying to deal with the fly mm. or you can just feel a firm fly. And eventually the fly will go away. The, eventually the fly will go away, right? And I'm a person where I, like, I'm on point. Like if someone messages me, I'm there, I respond. This, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but this is my slack. If we can't, it's not, it's not an issue. I'll hold it. We'll just have a picture on the screen. Yeah, we'll put a picture on the screen. Just take I, a screenshot now. I have, I have not responded to any, these people for days. For days. I've just refused. And I love them. They, these are my team members, right? But I've said, you know what? Bro, I'm inside the den, bro. I'm cooking in the kitchen, I'm in the lab, I'm working. And that's what I do every day, alhamdulillah. I just, just really quickly, if you're a course creator or a coach, are you confused about how to scale your business to seven figures? If so, you might be even more confused as to how we managed to scale our courses to three million plus whilst we were seeking knowledge and giving down full time. And you might be even more confused to see all of these brothers here that you can see on screen, how I've been helping them use the exact same formula for their businesses to scale their course and coaching services. We're seeing crazy results brothers are doubling their income in the first two and a half weeks some brothers making 5x in the first week that they've been working with us some brothers doubling their monthly recurring revenue in just two days so alhamdulillah the fruits are there and i want to share them with you inshallah ta'ala i know you've been working hard building your course your coaching program but you want to get seven figures so you can earn back your time to worship allah seek knowledge spend the money that you make for allah's sake spend time with your family and create wealth for the next generation with allah's over just permission so for that reason i'm going to show you and share with you the seven steps that I've outlined to seven figures that we did that we implemented to get to three million plus I'm going to share this with you and give you access to this on the 23rd of this month on Sunday 2 30 p.m uk time just go to the link below right now just quickly go right now and register your interest save your seat before you miss out this is going to be the biggest event in the Muslim entrepreneurial space inshallah ta'ala and I have made a promise to make every person who misses it regret not turning up so with that said we'll see you there i start my day and i spend uh there's this thing called the 100 minutes rule right like if you do something for 100 minutes every for 100 days you make like crazy progress so i don't know if there's any like research behind it but i was like that's a nice rubric to work towards like mm. if i spend 100 minutes on something i definitely for 100 days i, I the conclusion is, the outcome is going to be something spectacular inshallah right so every day i spend 100 minutes on marketing Right, which is the content, whether it be creating ads or the, the planning these podcasts for you guys, or a hundred minutes on the actual product, mm. and 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 that's and 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 that's the primary thing of my day. After that, meetings, this that check-ins I can do, but even that right now I'm not doing because we're working on this big launch, seven steps, seven figures webinar, which I want it to be the greatest and the biggest. And I believe it will be, inshallah, the biggest event in the Muslim entrepreneurial scene, period. Sure. So for that reason, I've got to make sure I produce something spectacular. So 
the point that I wanted to mention here is that so many of us don't get leads because we just don't advertise. We just don't advertise. There's a brother that I know, right, who was like growing his social media. He done he done mm. one of our Umrah setup uh, courses, and he was one of the brothers that his social media blew after he took the social media uh, growth tips from us, right? But what was the point of social media? To convert, get leads, to promote the Umrah, right? So when he launched his Umrah trip, he's like, bro, no one's buying. So I went and looked at his page. There were no ads. <laughs> he's got videos that have got millions of views. Half a million views We had only two videos Where he was actually Promoting his own trip So the key is You're not making content Just for content's sake mm. Right You're not just trying To get famous You're providing value To people so they can get A taste of what your Product is And then they'll buy And if you don't tell them They, they will never buy from you mm. Right They will never buy from you So for that reason It's really important That you actually Advertise Now your advertisement Could be in the form of Paid advertisement It could be in the form Of social media content Like which is Which is our primary Form of advertisement Right Organic content Which means You gotta give crazy value To Just let people See the benefit Of what your product offering is For free And then you let them know By they've got something paid Behind the paywall Where it's even more value Right yeah. You could have a multiplicity Of ways of advertising bro If billboards work for you Even though it's outdated It's not necessarily for everyone It still works in certain circumstances Which is why people still do it But do it Cold calling Cold email Whatever it is But bro 50% Of your time Needs to be spent on marketing Yeah And people Might be watching Thinking Oh but I do Well then you, you, need to, you need to do more You either need to do more Or You need to do it In a different way Some people might be watching Thinking oh but I do market And I'm still not getting sales Like there was a brother In the brothers club The other day Talking about um, He's struggling to get sign ups uh, For his Omer trip and um, he just, I just saw one video of his short form video. I said, bro, there's no long form content. No one knows who you are, what you're doing. Like, you need to put out more content. You need to get people to know you. You need to put out free valuable content in order for people to then convert from you, right? It's like doing nothing is one thing. Yeah. And to be honest, we even got you that before as well, especially with Five Star Umrah. There were so many times where for like months, we just wouldn't put anything out. Furthermore, the phone would be off. Like, I remember times, it was so peak. Just three months, the phone was just off. Like, rather than making payments, messaging, saying, can you confirm you received the money? Three months. I apologize to anyone that was affected by that. But I was just busy with other stuff, busy with the brothers coming with other things, family, etc. Um, but then when we finally put it back on, alhamdulillah, it, it, it came in, right? Mm. But that's the point, is that you have to be putting more time in or doing it different or better, which we're going to come to. Uh, yeah, like, sure. it's, 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 it's just so intuitive. You know, there's things in life that are counterintuitive, right? Where you're like, I thought it was going to be like that, but it's actually the other way around. But then there's some things that are just intuitive. It's, there are some things that are so intuitive that it, like you overlook it because it's like that's so common sense. Totally can't be that, bro. It is that, bro. It's 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 totally, totally, totally unreasonable for you to make money when you're not advertising. Yeah. It's just so unreasonable for you to think I put out one hand and I'm going to make money yeah. There was a brother I was speaking to today And uh, he's a PT right So he makes about £5,000 a month And the guy's refusing to advertise I had breakfast with him this morning I was like bro You need to make content every day By the way, we're, we're, we're talking about a guy who doesn't run ads His whole thing's based on organic, organic. content He's making £5,000 a long bedic because he done some advertisement, his product is really good, so people stay with him. He's got a lot of loyal customers, Alarm Badik. He's also got some wealthy people. So that's that's how he's making and he's it. He's got right? authority because of the clients that he has right. are well known and whatnot. Right, and some referrals and blah blah blah, right? And he's in some communities where he got some clients. Not because his marketing is great. His product is great, but his marketing is terrible. So he now wants to grow, right? He wants to be making 15k a month. He wants to scale. You know, we worked out about how what his ideal life is and how much money he needs to make to be able to Worship Allah Seek knowledge And do all of that khayl. So I was like bro, This is what you need to be doing So I'm like Okay cool Your bottleneck is marketing He's refusing mm. He's telling me I can't I'm like why He's like I just know I can't Like I, He's like he, I, he goes That's a thing that will pass me Like that's a thing that Is hard to get my head around mm. it, Like I struggle to come up with ideas And I, said, I, I actually looked at him I grabbed I got, like, No I didn't grab his hand But I wanted to I, wanted, I actually wanted to grab his face And say my brother Listen Your bottleneck Is marketing if you do not create content every single day, I said, there's a bunch of PTs that are coming up right now that are making content every day and they will blow you out of the water and you will be broke, my brother. You may even take your, all your customers. Do you understand? <laughs> so he got it. He's like, okay, cool. 
Cool. I was telling you to make free pieces of content every day. I said, brother, if this is the biggest bottleneck in your business, and this is the thing that's going to take this. Okay, look, you have to understand. There's some activity that moves the business forward. Mm. And then there's some activity that maintains the business. And then there's some stuff that just nudges the business forward. It makes sense that you focus on the thing that moves, moves the business forward. forward. Yeah. Marketing is that. Mm. Like he, It just doesn't make no mm. sense to me. So that's one end of the spectrum. Yeah. Then you've got guys who are making content. They're putting up with it all the time. And it's just like a flipping sales page for you. Go on there. It's like, please buy my product. Hey, buy my product. Hey, hey, please sign up for my trip. Hey, hey, do this. You know, register for my services. It's like, bro, like what? You, you think someone's going to come to your page? It's like people, when people come to your page, they don't want to feel like they're being sold to all the time. Mm. They want to get something from you. Why are they going to follow you? Because they thought, you know what? I'm going to benefit from this guy. Whether it's Dean, whether it's Dunya, whether it's whatever it is, I'm following you because some kind of benefit. Mm. But if I just come there and it's basically, it might as well be like yellow pages. It's, it's, a, it's a catalog. You know, I, I, I used to have catalog back in the day. You just go through them and find the section you want. Everything's an ad. It's literally just, it's just all ads. How, do you, how does someone like that solve their problem? So this is obviously the second mistake that we made in our marketing, right? And this is actually one of the reasons why I shut down the Knowledge College. So Knowledge College was our Islamic Studies Institute. It was a non-for-profit, but it was run as a business because we had to fund the staff, the employees, the teachers and, and grow it. But it got to a stage where the advertising fell on my head because at, that, at, a, at a particular point, not always, not at the end, but at a particular point, for most of it, the responsibility of the advertising came on me. And I wanted that project to grow irrespective of me. I didn't want it to be connected to me because it's that, right? I wanted it to grow and scale. And I, I didn't want people to just sign up because I'm teaching. I wanted it to grow. So I started taking myself out to the point where I stopped teaching classes for the last couple of years. But I'm advertising. And the only time you saw me in the context of that product or that community or on that page was when I was saying sign up. Like it's, it was like every three months when there was a new cohort, I would come out with a bunch of ads. And you would see in the comments, people were like, bro, the only time you come out is when you want to sell us something. Mm. That was the first time I made this mistake. The second time I made this mistake was when we launched the Brothers Club. I had taken a step back from the data to focus on seeking knowledge and building the business so we can come back and fund our own data, which people didn't know from the outset. From the outset, they just knew this guy stopped doing data. And then I came back selling the Brothers Club courses and okay, no problem, man. I'm selling the Brothers Club courses, but there's no value. Everything's just an ad. And people were like, bro, what, what the hell happened? Like, And it's bad for brand. It takes away the goodwill that you have built up with the people. They look at you as you're just out for money. They look at, bro, the only time I see this guy's face is when he's trying to buy me something. And mm. that puts people on guard. Mm. Like when I know someone's trying to buy it, sell me something, bro, I switch off straight away. I don't pay attention to that person. So for that reason, I realized that we have to drastically change our game right which is that you have to give way more value yeah. than what you ask for in terms of sales some people call this the jab jab hook right there's some entrepreneurs that made this famous that jab jab as in when hook, give give take give give take right so you, you give give and then you hook hook them in right because you've given them you've given them now, now now, you can ask Others call it the give to ask ratio Right Is that Make sure the amount of times That you give Is way more than what you ask So the give to ask ratio For us on our Instagram what, Is 11 to 1 or, or 10 to 1 So for every 10 videos That we release Currently you're going to see That the give to ask ratio Is 2 to 1 Because We've got a webinar That we're promoting Right mm. And you can Sometimes Amp up the volume of advertisements and asks when you get close to like a big launch, but you can't do that all the time. And that's got to be far and few. But generally speaking, what we do is we, we give way more than we ask. Even if you see an ad in every single podcast, if the podcast half an hour, but the ad is 30, 30 seconds, seconds, well, the give to us ratio is obviously I'm giving way more than I'm asking and people don't mind that. Mm. So that's another thing is having the balance between giving and asking. And I would even add on to that and say that whether you intend it or not, you're going to have to give. What I mean by that is either you choose and willingly give free valuable content on your own terms that you've planned and you make, or bro, you're going to have to give something. And usually what people end up giving is stuff like discounts, stuff like frees, <laughs> giveaways, because the, oh, you have to give some kind of value. Mm -hmm. And a person who's only sees sales from you, when they come to your page now, the only thing that will seem valuable for them that, that, that they will see and say, okay, well, this guy's finally giving me something 
is a discount. And you don't want to do that because then your price is going to go down, your margins are going to go down, and eventually you'll you're a race to the bottom and you're going to go broke. Shall I tell you something? You actually hit the nail on such a head, uh, you, you, you hit the nail on the head, bro. There was a very good brother I know who had a hijama clinic, right? And what he would do is, I went on his page, and by, uh, look, remember, if you have a paid strategy, mm. paid strategy is different. Mm. Some people can make paid content where they, where they, where they have paid ads, that they, that they that their whole thing is based on ads that you put money behind. And that ad is there to grab your attention and to put you in a funnel. And then in the funnel, they warm up the lead. Mm. But that's different. And that's not even my area of expertise. That's something that we're going to get into in the future, inshallah. Sure. Ta'ala. But we're talking about people who, who do this based off organic. Like our $3 million plus that Allah allowed us to make for our courses and our programs is on the back of organic marketing, right? So if a guy's not running ads, he's just got content, you're in the organic game. Right, like this brother was, you want to make sure that you have the balance right. So when I went onto his page, I saw a video. I just scrolled down for a bit, right? I saw a video saying, guys, I'm doing a discount for hijama. You know, it's only available for the next couple of days. Boom, 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 boom. And people are buying his discount for hijama, right? And it's like half price. And then I see another video come out saying, oh, by the way, I've extended the discount for a few days. <laughs> that's, that's the worst one, you have to extend it and change it. And right? Just, no, no. Okay, cool. So now people don't actually believe you when you give them a deadline. Yeah. Okay, then a week later, oh, guys. So last month I had a discount and that ran out. This month I decided to make another discount and it's 10% less. Then last time. And then, yeah, then last time. And then that discount, another video was extended. And then the next month after, it was another discount, 10% less again. Hmm. So I messaged the brother and I said, bro, stop that. Yeah. Start giving value. Now, you know, he's like, but I can't make in sales. What people don't realize is that sometimes people have certain benefits that maybe that, that, that are not going to last you long term. For example, that brother, he had a friend that had a really big social media account that would share his account. On the day he was getting gay, he was putting out a sale. So his traffic came solely from this friend. I said, bro, you are going to wake up one day and your friend's audience are going to get fatigue. They're going to get ad fatigue from you and they're just going to ignore. Do you understand? Your friend could die. What happens if he dies tomorrow? Like oh. anything could happen. The friend could lose his account. His account could get banned. If that's your soul, all your eggs are in that basket, bro. And, and even with the friend, you keep, it's, for you, it's, 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 it's a race to the bottom. Do you mm. understand? To the point where it doesn't become beneficial anymore. So you have to, um, right, we, don't, we don't lower prices. I have a rule. I do not give discounts. Inshallah, I will never give a discount. I will not, I will, I, I'll give you bonuses, but I don't give discounts. If we've got products that we sold, bro, for, for like four and a half thousand pounds, right? And it's because we've given the value prior. Do you understand? Like, you know, if you look at the brother Hiwa, all right? So he's a brother, I'm, I'm doing some consultation with him with regards to Iron Fitness. You guys may or may not have seen him. He's a calisthenics coach and he's got this product called Shilajit. Right, which is like helps you with your testosterone, all this, that, and the other. So currently he's doubling down on, on selling that, right? And he's trying to scale that. So Allah, but he's selling a commodity, right? Is, is, is it right to call it a commodity? Product? It's a product, it's, it's a commodity, right? No. Okay. Well, he's selling a product, right? Um, and he stopped his coaching service because Allah and is making good money from this. Now, although there's a lot I have to share with him with regards to how he can improve his marketing and his branding, but one thing that he definitely does is that he makes ads, but he has a lot of content in between the ad, mm. right? Like he puts a lot of value, a lot of content that people would like to watch, enjoy, get motivated by. And then he's got a sick ad of him, like with this black shilajit thing, shilajit, yeah? That helps you with your testosterone. So that's why he's doing good at Lombardi. But if he was just ad, 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 people get fatigued and then, and then and then they don't buy. So. So I think the take home there is that make sure you give way more value how much would you recommend? So it depends on the objective, right? If they're trying to maintain the audience, mm -hmm. if they're trying to grow the audience, what would you say? So look, the key here is that you always want to give more than you ask. And it's different for everyone, right? And also, if you don't ask, you won't make any money, right? Like my idea, my ideal circumstance and plan is, and I'm not sure if this is the best way to go about it because I haven't done it yet, right? So it's really important to differentiate between, because sometimes there's things that I can tell you I've done, and there's things I'm trying to do. So take what I'm trying to do with a pinch of salt. But this is my thought process. I want to be in a position where we can create so much value that our asks are less and less and less and less and less. So for example, we said, okay, cool. What's the maximum amount of 
of of of time or, or or what's the maximum gap that we can place between the times we ask and we give? We said, okay, cool. Well, the maximum is probably one ad per podcast, right? One thirty second to one minute ad per thirty minute to one hour podcast. Okay, on the short form content, it would be for every. 10 11. pieces of content we give out the 11th one no 11 to 12 okay the, for every 11 pieces of content we give out the 12th one is going to be an ad right i'd love to be able to get to a point where there are like some podcasts where we don't even put an ad mm. i'd love to, be able to get to a point where it's like from every like 100 pieces of content only one because the quality of the brand is okay maybe, maybe 100 is a bit a bit you know far-fetched but but the, the idea is that you want your you want your value to be so strong that when you give that one ad, bro, you don't even have any more spaces. That's the point you want to get to, right? The point is that when you want to get to a point where you make that one ad, and by the way, I'm talking to people who sell courses, coaching services, agency services, or communities, right? You make that one ad. Like, there's a brother that I know, bro. He puts out like an ad once every few months for 15 minutes, and he makes hundreds of thousands of pounds in that 15 minutes. He lets people know the night before, all right, listen, by the way, I'm opening this up. For five, ten minutes, and he makes a hundred thousand pounds plus every time he does that. Because he's given his community value prior to that. Do you understand? So so that way the ads don't have to be so like down your throat. The key is give as much as you can. And the more you give, surprisingly enough, the more people will buy. Right? But if you don't, people will get ad fatigue from you, they'll get frustrated, they'll stop watching you, following you, and they just won't buy. And you will just have to, as you said, but the only value you can give is lowering your price. Exactly. Okay, the third mistake that we made was that we launched without preparing people for the launch. Mm. Now, again, daft, right? That if you just come out there and launch a product and you haven't warmed up the audience to the launch, there's no buzz, there's no excitement, there's no attention in your way. Like it's actually risky. Sometimes there's times I've seen brothers that are like working on a product, and they're waiting for this. Like there was a brother that I know, right, a very good brother, Alan Bedik, and he put together like this PDF about how to move to Dubai or something like that, right? And this brother worked hard, but he worked so hard on the PDF, Alan Bedik. He put blood, sweat, and tears into it, right? And when he launched it, crickets, and he was surprised. My thing is like, like, where do we get off thinking that someone's gonna just like put something in the marketplace, and then suddenly everyone's gonna think, mm. oh, okay, cool, he's got something out here for us, let me buy it. No, what you have to do is, you know, there's other, there's things. That, look, there's some products that have like a referral based thing. Like for example, you know Uber when they launched, yeah. they were like uh, twenty pound free, twenty pound free for if you share it with someone, right? Like Roop, right? I've got this thing here where it's got a referral thing. If, if you want someone else. If you give someone else the referral link, I get a month free, they get a month free. By the way, I'll put my group link below and shout out to Ali. It's a sleep tracker <laughs> and it helps you with your recovery when you do exercise. Good for athletes. Anyway, point being is that, that that's a product that is that has an intrinsic mechanism to grow, right? Most are not like that. Mm -hmm. You're dropping a product and, and, and you also don't have any paid advertising. Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm talking, everything I'm saying here is in the context of organic. organic marketing strategy, right? I'm talking about organic. So you're dropping something even if you have a solid base of followers, bro, if you don't warm them up and hype them up prior, the day you launch, you're always going to get less than you would have if you actually had hyped them up. It's the difference between making 150K or making tw making 20K an hour and making 20K over a year. Like, it's honestly the difference. So I remember there was a time where we did this event in East London. I'm not sure if you remember. It was supposed to be like a marriage type of event. And I remember we launched it and uh, we were used to our events being packed to the brim, bro. Like, you remember our events, right? Yeah. Packed to the brim, like paid events. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about the free ones that messages. I'm talking about even there was like uh, venues yeah. that we've had like, packed to the brim. So then we had about this venue and... What was the event? I remember it happened, but I don't, but I don't it's remember. about marriage. It's not about marriage. And, and this was like big, we had different speakers, you know, international speakers. I, we sold six tickets. I had to refund everyone their money because that wouldn't have been enough to cover the cost of the, of the event. Yeah. And then it hit me afterwards. What did we do different every other time that we didn't do here? Hype. We hyped the people up. Remember KnowledgeCon? When we, when we launched KnowledgeCon, which was our event in the mission, bro, we hyped people up for a week. 
the, we got the event. Inshallah, it's going to be the biggest event of the century, right? Inshallah. And I actually think it probably was one of the, if not the, right? It was massive. And people were like, whoa, can't wait. What's this event? You know, you, you tease them. Hmm. You, 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 you prep them. You, you, you warmed them up for that. The, bro, the day you launch, bro, sold out in, in a week. Hmm. In, a, in a week, 500 tickets, brother. 500 tickets sold out in a week. That's insane. Hmm. Do you understand? So, the, um, the other thing is, I feel like a lot of people actually over overestimate how good their product actually is. Mm. Like everyone would like to think, okay, I put a few hours into this, I put blood, sweat, and into this, this is, this is a really good product. Mm. But most of the time, it's probably not. Like, mm. Because if a product is in that top 0.01%, it's true, it can get by and really go viral and create its own buzz just because of the launch and people seeing it and using it because it's something so revolutionary. But the reality is 99.99% of products and services are not like that. Yeah. And yours is pro most probably not like that either. So you have to then... Because remember, in your mind, it will always look cleaner and better than in the other person's mind because you understand what went behind it. Other, and the other people, they don't see that. Mm. All they see is the final thing. Is this good? Does it solve my problem? If it does, what's the price? Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> so you might be putting a higher value to it than it actually deserves. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you actually, so maybe sometimes it's just about putting that down a notch. Mm. And then alongside that, of course, prepare the people to you know whisper tea shout strategy and all these other things right so then that comes down to the point of like how long should you start preparing the people so one of the things that i noticed was that if i started letting people know about an event because we used to do an event every week right you could do this for courses oh, okay, right okay. so what i know is that when i would advertise at the beginning of the week hardly anyone will turn up so I said, okay, cool. Then that must mean that people heard about it too early and then they forgot about it. Because we live in a day and age where things so much going on. are taking people's advantage, uh, attention, left, right, center, right? So I was like, but when I promote it 24 hours before, there was more of a turnout than when it was seven days before. So then when I promoted it 48 hours, there was more of a turnout. And I found the sweet spot was like two to three days before. Okay. Anything before that, I wouldn't get such a turnout. Makes sense. Right? But that was a wrong way to look at it. Because what I realized was that for some, and the, and, and the day I realized this was when we launched the Brothers Club. Because it was something that we did accidentally. When we launched the Brothers Club, bro, we made 150K, alhamdulillah, in two weeks. Mm. Within the first, this is the first time it ever happened. The first, um, was it five minutes, 10 minutes? Well, how many minutes was it? I don't know. I remember. Was I just pressed refresh just to see have you got sale? And I just saw 5K and all that. Wow. And that never happened before. Yeah. Right? And I, I, I actually remember seeing your face. You looked at me. And then every time I refreshed, it, it was just money. 10, money. 15, money. 20, Do you understand? 25, 30. And I was just like. And by the way, the product was not expensive. It was only 313 pounds. So pounds. that's a lot of sales. That's volume, right? Mm. So I realized what we would do, we, that we actually started promoting like eight, nine months before we launched it. Yeah. Right? So then, then letting people know something about something from early is actually way better than letting them know about it two, three days mm. before. But then why wasn't it working when I would only let them know, when I would let them know a week before and then things would fizzle out? Why, would, why, like, why did I experience that? Oh. I mean, obviously, there's a few things, right? Number one, this is a recurring thing it's every single week. So that becomes mm -hmm. one of the things that you can't really do a year before if it's going to be happening every, every, mm -hmm. uh, every single week. And the other thing, I assume you probably just, you were in the shouts, you were just shouting for those last couple of days. So there was no teasing. And again, it's difficult to do that with a weekly recurring event. So, so I would say, event. The, if I could pinpoint the fundamental thing, is that there was no reminder. Like the reason people forgot is because there's no reminder. Do you understand? There's no reminder. But you were posting on your socials. Right, but it's like you've, you've done the heavy posting at the beginning of the week. So right, then it's okay. like you put the big ad out at the beginning of the week. And the first time you put the post up, it goes viral, right? You've already, the, it's happened on Monday. They've forgotten about it now. So, but what we did with the Brothers Club, which was sick, was that we, it's like we teased the people. Like we just, we, we just teased them. We made an Instagram page. Mm -hmm. We called it the Brothers Club. Mm -hmm. We didn't post anything. There were zero posts on there. Mm -hmm. We said brothers only. Mm -hmm. We didn't let any sisters in. Posting the story. Guys would have to do what? Send us voice notes to prove that they were men. Yeah. So everyone was like, well, what is this? And it's funny, brothers are actually reporting 
sisters with fake accounts that came in using fake accounts and then <laughs> changed their name back to the normal account. And, and then what we were doing, we were promoting little bits of content mm. on my and your personal pages. pages to let the people know we've got something coming. Join the Brothers Club. Just join it. Just join it. It's coming. But And then we post a little bit more on the Brothers Club and then we disappear. And then we come back in Ramadan and maybe on... Go to Dubai and record a promo. Promo. And record a little teaser and, shots. And then in the podcast, the Ramadan with the Mandem during Ramadan, we would show the ad to the guest who came and get his reaction to the ad. Yeah. That was just ingenious. And that was your idea, Allah, very Barakallah Feek. Like, you were just showing it to them and their reaction was like, woof. Oh, that's mad. And everyone's like, what, what is, is this? this thing? And ever and then what, and then what you start doing is um, uh, the imagery might not be great here, but I like to think of it like pregnancy contractions. You know when a woman starts to have contractions, <laughs> the contractions they come, but the closer she gets to pregnancy, the closer they get and the more intense, intense they get, yeah. right? So that's what you want to do with your with your launch is that you want to let people know, and then maybe you don't say anything for two three weeks. And what you're giving them is not that intense; it's just a little sign. But the closer you get, the more intense you're le you're letting them know is, and the more frequent it is. And then literally, like a week before, it's the the baby is coming, right? The launch is about to happen. It's the most intense, and it's the most frequent. It's every day. Just pop, 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 pop. You're letting them know. And when you do that, what you know, this I I saw a guy on mine the way he explained it. He said this is called a whisper tea shout. And I actually love the way he 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 broke that down. It's like at the beginning, it's like you're whispering. Something's coming. And in the whisper, you just give them a little glimpse of what it is. And then the second stage, which is about two months before the launch, is give them, give them, is the tease. Yeah. That's when you start showing them a bit more. Mm. Give them an idea of what what it what it is, what's it gonna solve, how yeah. how is it gonna work, what like just a few different snippets, as you said. And at that stage, you let them know when the day it's gonna launch. Mm. When you start the tease, you let them know the day it's gonna launch, and you start to give them samples of what's in the product, what's in your course, what's in your coaching. And then the last seven days is the shout, and that's where you're like sending them messages every day, emails. Guys, don't forget the date. Da, 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 we're launching. It's gonna be great. Life's gonna change. Blah, 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 blah. And then pow. Do you understand? The people have been primed. They have been teased and whispered to. They have been shouted at. And they're willing. Do you understand? There was a brother who, uh, he did this great. And again, he did it by accident, right? He was making a video about this marriage documentary that he was going to put out. And he just mentioned it. And shared a trader with people, right? And I'm not condoning anyone here or if anyone knows what I'm talking about, I'm not condoning them or what they do. I'm just talking about purely the concept, the concept, right? So this documentary is going to come out and um, put out like an ad, mentioned it in a bunch of videos. Every video he made in the comments, the, there was an onslaught of people saying, where is the documentary? He stopped talking about it for years. Yeah, every video, people are like, where is it? Because he teased them so badly, mm. right? So of course it was it was something that was interesting. You have to have a good offer for people in the first place, and then it's just people. Are just where is it? Where is this thing? And the thing is, what you can't do is make them wait too long, because eventually, too many years pass by, people will forget about it, right? And then when you do launch, it's like okay, cool. I, I didn't really get anything I was expecting to, but had I launched it within that window, then maybe I would have would have got millions. Of, of sales or views or whatever have you, but you gotta find the time. So whisper, and that's when you don't let them know what the date is, but something's coming. You just let them know this this is coming. Something about this is coming. My course is coming. My this is coming. My my that's coming. The teases now. I've let you know the date, and I'm giving you samples and examples of what is what is in the product, right? What's in my community, my my agency, my coaching or my course. And then the last seven days, shout guys, be there. And then when you do that, when you launch. Tell me, inshallah ta'ala, if you don't make with Allah's permission the largest amounts of sums that you've ever seen in the shortest amount of time. Okay, so the fourth issue that we had with our marketing was that we weren't getting passive leads. What's a passive lead? You explain. So a passive lead is when you're not having to do active marketing mm -hmm. and people are coming into your funnel anyway mm -hmm. because they're seeing content and they're seeing things online. And, you know, you, you're, you've got a funnel which directs people Sorry, you've got a system to direct people into your funnel yeah. without you having to, because like before, 
we used to have to jump on webinars. Hey guys, the webinar come jump on. When they jump on, they told them, by the guys, buy, you know, buy our product or service or whatever it is in the description, for example. But then the way our sales would go, if you look at, you know, there's a, there's a picture that I sent into the group, which was be big spikes, mm -hmm. then it would be zero. Then a big spike and then zero and a big spike. And then in those zero times, because you become the bottleneck and your promotion is, that, is the only promotion. In those zeros, it gets stressful mm -hmm. when there's nothing coming in and you're wondering, okay, cool, what, like, what's going to happen here? Then we spent about maybe three to four months. And again, if you look at the, 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 the graph, you can see in the middle, this is three, four month period where the, bin, the business generated no money. In fact, we had, you had to put in your life savings mm -hmm. into the business just to sustain it while we spent that time working on the products, on the offer, on the marketing, on the sales, on the strategy, on the, everything. And then you see when we did launch, um, we had the system in place, we had new people on board, uh, you know, for taking different roles and stuff off of our shoulders. Things just happening in the background. Number one, the volume of sales increased dram dramatically. But number two, the consistency. There's no more, dzz, dzz, it's just literally, just, it's like a heartbeat and it goes up and it goes down a little bit, but it's, it's consistent. Uh, and that was amazing. Like we didn't have to, and yeah, we were still promoting. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, but the consistency of leads wasn't necessarily dependent on us having to constantly promote, 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 promote. We could promote and not promote again for the next few days mm -hmm. and the leads would still be generated. Mm -hmm. We'd create almost like a self-sustaining funnel. Right. So I actually went to our mentor slash coach, right? Mm. Um, who, by the way, is not like some internet guy. This guy's a CEO of a massive regional CEO yeah of the MENA region yeah, yeah. Of, of a massive digital marketing agency their clients have been like Emirates Airlines and and currently EMAR and DP World and like Uber like yeah. you know what I'm saying he's the CEO so we'll get that real deal from him Alain Verdict and he built the UAE <laughs> office from scratch he was yeah. probably number one yeah they asked him we said we want to set up a set up a base in, in the region we want you to head it. Yeah. So he grew it from zero to 250 employees. A lot of bad. Mm -hmm. So I, I said to him this, I said, bro, I'm, I'm really frustrated because we don't get leads unless we actively seek them, right? We're not getting this passive leads. And generally speaking, whenever we want to seek the lead, Allah gives it to us. Like, you know, it's create the ads, we know the volume of ads to create, to get the sales that we need. Umrah trips is like that sold out the knowledge college cohorts Umrah set up whatever it is that we've sold we've always sold out or like very close to selling out the point where the cash flow has never been an issue but it's just extremely grueling it's extremely taxing that's just brother every month like I've just got to come and put out this blast of content to be able to get those sales right and when you when it's passive, it's like, bro, you could just be working on other things, building the product, even if it's a month that's a bit low. It's not too low because sales are still coming in. So he 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 looked at me. He didn't even think. He said it's a branding issue. He said, you've got a branding problem. I said, what do you mean? He said you've not done anything long enough for people to know that you're known for that one thing. He said when you stick to one thing and you do it time and time and time again over an extended period of time, and that's the one thing that you get known for, You pe people start to understand that you are the go-to guy for that. You become known in that industry, you become known as the person who solves that problem and that pain, and people will just constantly be coming to you because you've built an image for yourself in that, you've built a reputation for yourself in that space. He said, you've just been chopping and changing, and it's true, right? Is it, is it that we sell... Umrah uh, packages Okay well we stopped doing that After a couple of years Now we teach people how to, how to How to How to set up Umrah companies And then we stopped that now So Prior to that It was Islamic studies program online And before that Teach people how to pass their exams And then our, And then there was sunnah this match. Called Sunnah match Like bro what do you do Shahwa. Right <laughs> Which was Something that never made it Right <laughs> And even when it comes to that, it's like, okay, cool, cool, you're known for giving data to the guys in the streets. And then it's like, okay, cool, you're teaching classical texts. Like, like wh what? The place. why should people come to you? Like, they, people should know, like, you're the guy who solves this problem. And for that reason, we decided to completely rebrand. 
and change the succession to righteous and rich. I made that decision with Allah. There was permission. We made that decision. We said we're going to remove Chamabai, and it's very hard because Chamabai has been our, our biggest podcast, and it's th- it was one of the biggest podcasts in the Muslim space, right? In terms of how big it was, how v- wide the impact was, and how long it had been on for past hundred episodes. Very seldom It was in the top 1% Top 0.5% Right um, No doubt So But it was a very hard decision To be like We have to kill this Because at the end of the day Like Chama Bai was For me I was struggled Didn't really And me and you Didn't fully see eye to eye But I never felt like It was clear to even me What Chama Bai is about So if it's not clear to me I can't expect to be clear to other people It just sounded, it felt like Chama Bai was always Just changing based on What our moods were Whatever we were going through In life at that time and does it even serve a product, right? Mm. Or if it's not a product, does it serve the doubt? Or well, sometimes it serves the doubt, or sometimes it serves a product. So then we start this new thing called Righteous and Rich. I said, you know what, bro? We are currently on a mission to give that out to brothers who are in the entrepreneurial space. The same way I was on a mission to give that out to guys who are on the streets. The reason I pivoted was because I'm, I don't live in the streets. I don't live in a place where I've got gangsters anymore. So I'm around people that are now entrepreneurs. And businessmen And C-suite executives And venture capitalists So I'm in that space So then I'm going to give it out I'm going to call out And teach and educate These people At the same time Qadr Allah Allah made it So that our business Is providing B2B services To these type of people Teaching them how to scale Their courses Agencies Coaching programs And paid communities So then My business Is in the B2B space My DAO happens to be To the space we actually have something called Righteous and Rich Which Perfectly aligns These two objectives That's the case I'm going to rebrand And you know what bro Our views plummeted People probably see it right If you just go Just go back a f- Just go back a few a, f- a few videos Right Just like about, about, about A couple weeks And you will see The views That this channel was getting Look at the videos now I'm conscious that it plummeted Because that's what happens When you rebrand initially But you know what I the, the 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 signups that are coming in, the people that are opting in and subscribing, it's still it, we're actually getting more opt-ins right now than ever before, mm. right? It's because we've narrowed down our focus. So people think that there's a correlation between views and how much impact you actually make. No, because you can get a lot of views, but your impact is very shallow, right? It's like in doubt. Don't worry about numbers. Just benefit people. People get millions of views, but they're just entertainers, what, right? Or what, what, what do you have to show for your years of? There's this notion of the broke millionaires, people mm. who have. Millions of followers But they don't have Billions of pounds They're actually broke I met a brother Who had half a million followers And he was struggling bro Mm. With just making A few sales Every week Right Sorry every month So we did this rebrand So that people can now Get to know Okay cool 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 We're known for this one thing Okay I'm giving DAO To these type of people And anyone else Can benefit from that DAO too And my business Serves These type of people As well by the way It serves these type of people So now this is one thing Like Usually you can't align These two right But Allah made it I feel like he made it easy For us to align Hopefully right It's a it's a blessing And not a test It's a blessing And not a, and, 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 and not a punishment For our sins But We've done that And now it's like We're just Every day just, I'm letting you know too, Just bro Make money for the sake of Allah So you can use it for Allah's deen And be righteous mm. And focus on the akhirah Make money for Allah's sake So you can earn the akhirah And it's just Every day just hitting that same thing And I believe that inshallah This is going to solve our problem Of, of, of not having passive leads Barakallah fiqh Jazakallah khairan Hopefully you guys benefited From that episode of Righteous and Rich And don't forget We've got our webinar Seven steps to seven figures Coming up on Sunday the 23rd of June Inshallah 2pm UK time We will be going through The very same processes Steps That we took Alhamdulillah with Allah's permission and tawfiq alone Allowed us to generate over 3 million dollars in revenue Across various businesses across the years Alhamdulillah with you guys Absolutely for free All you have to do to attend is just register at the link below And we shall see you there See you on the next episode of Righteous and Rich Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk